Coming up next on Red Apple 21, April's edition of Profile takes a look at the special needs of the intermediate student and how these needs are met by the staff and administrators at Lake Braddock Intermediate, the 7th and 8th grade division of Lake Braddock Secondary School. Welcome to Profile, Red Apple 21's monthly look at selected schools in Fairfax County. This month, Lake Braddock provides the setting for our focus on the intermediate grades of the secondary school. Lake Braddock serves some 5,000 students in grades 7 through 12, so it is important for the intermediate students to have the appropriate transition from elementary to high school by way of the special programs designed specifically for 7th and 8th graders. Our show will profile these programs and demonstrate how the intermediate school functions as an individual school and as part of a larger school body. Because Lake Braddock intermediate students are in a period of transition from elementary to high school, their personal and academic needs may vary from those who require some of the security and nurturing they received in elementary school to those who need freedom to move toward increased independence and self-awareness. The faculty and staff at Lake Braddock Intermediate are committed to providing opportunities and support for all students in this transitional period, while working to meet three major challenges that exist in the school. These challenges center around the size of the school, the open layout of the instructional areas, and the characteristic needs of intermediate students. First, let's look at the issue of size at Lake Braddock. Ann Jekyll, principal of Subschool 1, which includes all of the 7th grade students, spoke to us about the challenge of being part of a larger school. I, I think it's an incredible challenge. And what it has forced us to develop is a very positive attitude instead of saying, oh dear, what are the disadvantages? We always look at the advantages. One of the huge advantages that I see is that we attract intermediate teachers who would not go to an intermediate school if it were not connected with a large high school department, a music department, an English department, uh, people who are intellectually excited about their field and pioneering. And so a lot of our intermediate teachers come here for the extra stimulation. Therefore, we have the resources. We have unlimited resources in terms of teacher talent and building resources for developing that specialized program for the intermediate student. Um, the challenge is that the seventh grader and the eighth grader not feel like they're just one student of 4,600, but that we have developed a unique place for them. Although Lake Braddock is a large secondary school, intermediate students are encouraged to think of their sub-school as a cohesive unit with its own principal, faculty, counselors, and media center, and very similar in size to the elementary school they attended. First of all, the building was built for that. The building is built in sub-schools. So just walking in, the architecture, everything cries out for the whole concept of a school within a school. We have in a sub-school, we, we first of all teach the core subjects, math, science, English, and social studies. But each sub-school has its own leader, its own sub-school principal, its own uh, counselors who work with the administration and with the teachers. We have uh, open space in the English and the social studies areas and in the math area. And all of this promotes the idea that I think of as the middle school philosophy and also the sub-school philosophy, which is that we are a family uh, in a small unit. The staff encourages participation in the many activities that draw intermediate students closer together. There is a real sense of teamwork, but at the same time, a great deal of importance is placed on the student as an individual. Teachers spend time talking to students about how things are going at school and at home, 
and helping them adjust to their new surroundings. Now for the students who come into like into subschool one after the first week of school, we automatically assign them for the day to a student who is also in their English history class. And those students are made to feel that it is their complete responsibility to make sure that student doesn't get lost and introduce them to other kids in the cafeteria. And often friendships develop out of that. Um, but we make sure, most of the students tell me that after a day and a half, they can find their way around and they know their classes. And so if they can get help and support for one day, usually that gets them through. And many times, as I said, the, the share bear ends up being a close friend the rest of the year anyway. Because the home base for students is the English Social Studies classroom, counselors often meet with these students during this period to talk about different topics, such as peer pressure or stress management. As an eighth grade counselor, I find that meeting the needs of my 300 students individually can be a logistical nightmare. Therefore, I often try to identify a problem that several have in common and teach them coping skills and give them support as a group. Recently, Tina Yalen, an eighth grade social studies teacher and I, shared our concerns about some of her GT students who seem to be experiencing a great deal of stress. Working as teammates, we compiled information, we spliced, we brainstormed, we tossed out extraneous material to create a two-day mini-unit on stress management. To begin with, we realized that the kids need to be able to identify stressors and to know what they feel like. Um, we thought we'd begin by sort of throwing out at you a couple of experiences or situations that are stressful. Having a due date that's five minutes away and you're not done, stressful. Um, we want to throw one situation at you in particular and see if you can identify the symptoms, like what happens to your body when you're in that situation. Here's the situation. It's a spring day, gorgeous outside, long winter. You're at lunch with three of your friends, two or three of your friends, and spring fever, you know, and your minds are beginning to work together, and you make a decision. Let's leave school grounds just for a little while. Go over to the giant, get us a little dessert. Come back in time for sixth period. You do it. Unfortunately for you, there are witnesses. You're missed by your fourth and your fifth period teachers. You're sitting in sixth period, you don't know this. You're sitting in sixth period, suddenly one of those little assistants comes to your class from the main office there, and there's a little slip of paper with your name on it. What's happening to you? What's happening? Zero win, what's happening to you? Give us a list, what's happening? What's happening, Matt? Stomach's tightening up a little bit. What else is happening? Scared to, death. Scared to death. Get concrete. What's happening? You're beginning to sweat. Getting uncomfortable, actually. The counseling discussions help students talk about their feelings and experiences at home and at school. Their teachers express genuine interest in hearing from them and try to make the intermediate students feel comfortable about opening up. The counselors realize that the students want to be thought of as individuals who make up the student body. The personalized attention given in these group discussions assures the intermediate students that they are important members of the student body and that people are there for them when needed. In addition to this type of counseling, Lake Braddock also has an effective peer counseling program to assist 7th and 8th graders. The peer counseling program started as an arm of the guidance program three years ago. And we had found from talking to other school systems that often one of the most significant programs that had been developed for especially high-risk students, those are students who were liable to drop out of school, students who might be thinking about using drugs or whatever, many of those students responded more positively to talking with other students. Um, it's been well known for a long time that 
adolescents feel much more comfortable talking to their peers than they do talking to adults. And so many counseling programs or many counselors were feeling that sometimes we weren't reaching students that really needed to be reached. And so we started a peer counseling program. The intermediate students are not the only ones concerned about the large student population at Lake Braddock. The parents of 7th and 8th graders are also concerned that the size of the student body might impact the individualized attention their children need at this stage in life. To alleviate these fears, the school has prepared an informative orientation program for parents and students just entering the school. The orientation explains how the school is divided into subschools and that each grade level is a separate subschool operating as a cohesive unit. The slideshow, prepared as part of the orientation, allows students and their parents to become familiar with their new school and to see some of the special facilities and activities that will be available to them. The faculty and administrators of Lake Braddock Intermediate assure parents that the school is meeting the needs of their 7th and 8th graders by keeping them informed on student progress. We talked with resource teacher Karen Flan, who works with learning disabled students, about the importance of keeping parents informed on programs that affect their children. At Lake Braddock, our resource program for students is called Basic Skills. This class takes the place of an elective in students' schedules. The other courses that our students take are regular mainstream classes. Students who have a learning disability are average to above average in intelligence. Our goal in working with students is to work with their strengths and develop compensatory strategies to overcome their learning disability. The material that we use in working with students comes from the mainstream courses that they're taking. We work closely with the mainstream teachers and are in communication regarding the material that's presented and the progress of our students. Uh, we find that parents of incoming seventh grade students are apprehensive about two things. First of all, they're concerned about their child being labeled. Uh, in particular, the fact that other students might know that their child has a learning disability. And second, uh, they're concerned about the size of Lake Braddock. Uh, Mr. Blaylock, uh, you have a daughter who's in seventh grade here at Lake Braddock. Uh, what observations have you made about your child uh, and her learning disability here at Lake Braddock? Present and past tense, to start where you began and say what apprehensions. Initially, my daughter was terrified at being branded uh, as a student with uh, a learning disability. That very quickly dissipated as she submerged herself kind of into the culture of this unique school. By maintaining a close relationship with parents and continuing programs that place importance on the individual students, Lake Braddock Intermediate meets the challenge of being part of a very large school. In fact, the size of the school is seen more as an opportunity than a challenge. And I think what I see is the advantages of being in a school 7 through 12. One is the students that we have coming into the 7th grade who are accelerated and have special needs in terms of program. For instance, accelerated math courses or second or third year language courses. We can accommodate them much more easily than a school that has no high school program offered. Uh, students at those schools often have to go to the nearby high school and have a very disconnected day trying to get back and forth between both schools to accommodate their special needs. Another reason is I really believe that, that the high school students at Lake Braddock offer real good role models for 7th and 8th graders. In a school where 7th and 8th graders are all by themselves, I think they have a very inflated view of what it means to be grown up or what it means to be a teenager. Um, they, they get most of that from, uh, from the television and from other media. And at Lake Braddock, I think they can see high school kids in operation and they can see that most of them handle themselves responsibly. And I think it, it gives 
students a role model that's that's more realistic than what many of them have at intermediate schools that have just 7th and 8th grade. By being part of a secondary school, the 7th and 8th graders have opportunities that some intermediate students don't have. The drill team for 7th and 8th graders is one example, as it allows these girls to take an active role in promoting school spirit. At the beginning of the year, we have tryouts for all the 7th and 8th grade students. And when they try out, they learn certain routines and they are judged in front of a panel. And this panel chooses, oh, the number ranges anywhere from 15 to 45 girls per class. The idea behind the drill team is to learn the routines, to be part of the school spirit, to perform at different functions, to allow um, each girl to participate in the high school experience, and also to um, give them a chance to practice for when they want to try out at the high school level. We want to mention that our varsity girls are a very important part of our drill team. We have three varsity lieutenants who spend every Monday and many times Wednesdays and other days of the week with our girls. They're the ones who actually teach the seventh grade girls the routines. They come to their performances and they're a vital part of the squad and we couldn't really do it without them. In, the way, in this way, we think that the um, seventh grade feels just as much a part of the entire school at Lake Braddock because they are so involved with the upperclassmen. And we think that the drill team is a good way to promote this feeling of school spirit. Intermediate boys also have the chance to interact with upperclassmen and become part of the athletic program by participating in intramural wrestling. Uh, after school, we have an intermediate program that feeds directly from our PE program. Uh, we have a tournament in the class, and then the winners from the class will come after school, like some of these boys, work out, uh, then we get it down to one in each weight. My boys will then wrestle another uh, teacher's in a final match in assembly we have. A uh, whole sub-school will come down and watch it. Through this, my varsity kids get the chance and I get a chance to see some of the younger guys and work with them and we get to teach them some of the things to do and what not to do in our program. We stress being a good student along with it. So a lot of my older boys will take some of these other boys under their wing and say, well, now this is what we need to do. That's what I'm saying. In this way, I get to see them. I, younger kids get to see my varsity wrestlers and how they react and it's just a one feeder leads into another and that's how we it's just a teaching for progression that's all we do at lake braddock the intermediate students are encouraged to view older students as positive role models and to see their work in academics athletics and the arts as incentives when we all share rooms up here because of the situation there's so many different mediums going on and the um, because of that little the intermediate kids will be uh, in my room say two periods a day and the rest of the day I have upper level students really uh, really upper level I have a commercial design class where they're working on ads and um, calligraphy and just really beautiful work that takes weeks and weeks to do. So these kids are exposed to this daily. They come in the room and there's something done by um, an, a, a student that has definitely taken their time with it. So I think they really can um, see what goes on. We have seen how the challenge of size has worked to the advantage of students in Lake Braddock's intermediate grades by offering opportunities that might not exist at smaller schools. We'll move on now to the school's second major challenge, that of the school's open classroom design. As in the challenge of size, the school sees the challenge of the open instructional areas 
as an opportunity for greater exchange of ideas and new approaches in instruction. Subschool 2 principal Jim Clark talked to us about this challenge and how it encourages teamwork and a community spirit. Coming to Lake Braddock, I found an excitement among the teachers that was different than any I had found in the previous schools I had worked in in the county. And I tried to find out what was causing some of this excitement. And I realized that part of the excitement that I found came from the openness that was here in school. Because when teachers teach in an open area, they, they work at their peak all the time, if it's possible for a person to work at their peak. They can't go into a classroom and close the door and know that no one's going to see them except the 30 students that they have there with them. But rather they're aware that their peers are right next to them in the area right next to them. Their peers are around the halls, or around the open areas, that I am around the open area, parents are in the open area. There's, there's an excitement, there's a desire to perform at your best. And I see this in the teachers, and it, it makes a difference. It makes a big difference. It leads to the feeling that we're in this together. There is not the sense of isolation, that we care about the total student. And I think this shows up as, as teachers work together in this open area. The open instructional areas encourage the practice of team teaching at the intermediate level. We talked with teachers Susan Boyle and Mary Lipsy about this practice and how they make it work for their seventh grade English and social studies classes. Well, team teaching has uh, a lot of benefits in that both the English and history are meshed so that students see that the disciplines aren't taught separately. We support each other with English and writing skills and research skills and the kids have uh, the talents of two teachers that will work together and uh, give them their better parts hopefully during the day. We're lucky in that teaming has only gotten better, teaching has only gotten better because of the teaming. Um, we have a tendency when we're teaming individually I think to be very self-centered and be very structured and narrow-minded in what we do but when we're teaming we get to see a broader spectrum of things and we get to uh, experiment with some ideas, we get to I love the history now, and since, since I get to teach them that history in, in one way or another, then I get to incorporate some of the history into the English aspect, which is more fun. It's just more fun for us, and it makes more sense in a natural flow of things. If we're reading a novel, we might as well read it about a history thing. I think that team teaching has made me a much better teacher because, uh, particularly in the open classroom, we're always on view, and uh, we always have to have our plans down to the minute so that the kids are on task and working and um, it's made it so that we can have flexibility and have maybe more history one day and more English in another day. Um, it gives us a lot of um, opportunities to do special projects with the kids too, which I may not try in a closed classroom. As a result of team teaching and working together, a real sense of camaraderie exists between faculty members which extends beyond the workday to activities such as the annual faculty review. The open classroom approach works well at Lake Braddock because structure is created to manage the openness, especially in math classes, where five groups are side by side in a large open area. The uniqueness of Lake Braddock, at least our teaching situation, is this large room in which we can house five classes simultaneously. Because of the flexibility of the partitions, we can then group students either as classes or in large groups for audiovisual presentations or guest speakers. Because we're all together, there's a great sharing of ideas and techniques. We meet as a team to discuss an overall plan for our instruction. This arrangement provides opportunities for many types of classroom activities. The structure of our program does not come from four walls, but it comes from the way in which we instruct, which includes daily review of previously learned skills, new objectives taught and practiced, and then 
problem-solving application to those skills. The open instructional areas around the centrally located media center also encourage interdisciplinary activities. I think the openness encourages the interdisciplinary activities. It, it forces the teachers to work together. A social studies teacher does not work in isolation. An English teacher does not work in isolation. Uh, during their conference periods, always, I mean almost always, you see the English and social studies teacher sitting down working together. They're talking about the same students. They're talking about what works, what doesn't work. They're talking about their curriculum. How are they going to work their units together? Whatever it may be. What can the English teacher do that is supportive of the social studies? What can the social studies teacher do that is supportive of the English teacher in working together on a unit? In meeting the challenge of open instructional areas, Lake Braddock Intermediate has once again shown how teamwork can turn the challenge into an advantage. As we move on to the final challenge, that of meeting the needs of the intermediate age student, we'll see how special programs and projects satisfy the enthusiasm for learning found at the intermediate level. First, social studies teacher Tina Yalen and counselor Jerry Newberry will discuss common characteristics and needs of seventh and eighth graders. I think of an analogy almost that the, the adolescent at the age that we see them is sort of on this bridge. It's one of those log bridges that are very precarious and he's trying to walk that bridge and it takes all his concentration to walk that bridge. He doesn't look behind because if he does he might fall off the bridge. He doesn't look ahead because if he does he yeah. might fall off the bridge. And so he's so busy concentrating on where he is getting across that these other issues that those of us who work with them know are important, they're not ready. And the parent is saying, look ahead, there's a hole up here. Don't you see the hole? And the kids say, no, I don't see the hole. Or in any case, the hole will magically disappear by the time I get there. You know, eighth graders, I think, tend to believe in magic a lot. Characterized by a high energy level, the intermediate student likes to get involved with projects that require creativity and hands-on work. These hands-on projects are an integral part of the learning process at Lake Braddock and are used in all areas of the curriculum. And as a part of the curriculum, many teachers use hands-on activities and projects. The intermediate student has such a high energy level and can be motivated to learn so that many of these teachers will use the hands-on projects. Projects are in all of the disciplines and with the open space, it's really neat because teachers and students can see what other teachers and students are doing. There's a lot of sharing here at Lake Braddock. Several of the intermediate students talked with us about their projects. My name is Amy Tarasovic. I'm in seventh grade and as a science class requirement I had to do a science project and I did it and my project is titled Comparison of Various Water Supplies and it was just um, a research project on the chemical makeups of four different waters. Um, my science teacher told me that she thought that I should go to the Lake Braddock Science Fair, which I did, and I competed in the intermediate category of environmental science. Um, I won second place there, and so I went to the regional science fair, was at, which was at Robinson, and I won third place there, along with awards from the United States Army and the Water and Soil Conservation Northern Virginia District. My name is Brian Reed and, and I'm an eighth grader here at Lake Braddock and for science we're studying simple machines, how they can be used. And as a requirement of the unit we had to build an invention that used at least five of the six simple machines. And basically what mine does is a wheel and axle, that's a truck, because up an inclined plane, acts as a wedge, it dumps marbles down this screw, acts and lands in this bucket and activates a pulley system which releases a hook and it shoots a dog biscuit. And that's supposed to get your dog out of your room when he's bothering you. Hi, I'm Christy Kimball and this is Marie Gantz. These are the Animal Farm projects that we had to do for our eighth grade social studies class. First, we read the book Animal Farm and then we chose our favorite scene or character from the book and depicted it in the most creative or original poster that we could do. Lake Braddock provides learning opportunities to challenge students at all academic levels. In the Intermediate Gifted and Talented, or GT Center, for instance, 
Teachers are always working on new projects to pique the interest of their students. One of the things that we love the most about what we do with, with the kids who are in the program are the different options, the different ideas, and the different teaching strategies that we use. Our focus is on higher level thinking skills, on creativity training, on using primary and secondary resources in questioning strategies. And we use them in a whole assortment of ways. What you're observing here is an art gallery, which is really an English writing assignment. What it meant was that students had to transform themselves into the personality of a famous artist. And they did that by writing about the person, by creating a work of art in the genre of the person. And here they're in costume, playing out the scenario, the personality of that person. We use a lot of simulations. We use a lot of debating possibilities. We do a lot of research. And the kids really are very much the thinkers and the facilitators of what happens in, in our classes for gifted and talented kids. My name is Megan McCarthy, and today I'm Mary Gassat. And for my project, I did this picture of a mother's morning ritual. And it's a little girl who's getting her feet washed in a little wash basin on her mother's lap. I got this picture from looking at all of her other pictures. She did mostly of mothers and children's and families. Um, my, for my research, I had to look up what like her elements were, what kind of color she used, what her subject was, and just about her life. I'm Vic Holman, and I'm dressed up to be like Rembrandt. Um, I got this painting. It's Kite Watch from Rembrandt's Night Watch because it has a nice gathering of an event that's going on, and a lot of people seem like kind of interested in what's going on, and it's just. I thought this was a good idea because it suggested to not watch. Hello, my name is Chris Downs, but today I'm Peter Paul Rubens. I get the idea for this painting because many of Rubens' paintings were of people and animals fighting. The name I got, which is attacker or prey, was because in all of his paintings, what he named them was what the picture actually portrayed. The art gallery was a perfect project for these enthusiastic seventh graders who were able to learn about art history, create their own work of art, and take on the personality of their chosen artist for the day. As the students progress from seventh to eighth grade, they become eligible for classes and activities that also involve high school students. For instance, 8th graders may take a class in debate and try out for the Lake Braddock debate team. There are many benefits from the debate program. Students at a very early age learn how to use all of our media centers. They frequently go to George Mason Library in addition to the county libraries. And the kind of research that they are doing is very similar to what seniors do for their senior research papers. They are able to gather that research, make arguments. They learn how to communicate. They learn how to uh, speak, to think on their feet, to analyze and synthesize arguments and the types of things that they can do from the seventh, uh, for seventh graders and eighth graders are really incredible. And on the seventh card insolvency, you say there are no physical barriers. Now, does, doesn't this take out your inherency? No. Inherency is a barrier like governments or that that would prevent our plan from going into action. What this says is there's no physical barrier. There's nothing that would prevent this food from getting through once there's enough food being shipped. It says that the food can get to the people. And why hasn't then, if there's, if the, there's no barriers, then why hasn't this problem already solved? They're not sending enough food and they don't have enough money that they're, that they're using. Our team is made up of 8 through 12. The older students work in labs and they work as teachers taking on the novice students. And so the younger students are able to learn from the older ones and watch them as models and they learn very quickly then how to debate because they don't use a teacher, me, as just their one resource. They're able to learn from the older students as well. Intermediate students also have the opportunity to take part in extracurricular activities like the school newspaper, the previously mentioned drill team and intramural wrestling, and productions in the drama department. 
When we were visiting Lake Braddock, intermediate students were preparing for a presentation of Godspell. The cast was made up of 7th and 8th graders, and in order to give more students a chance to participate, the roles were double cast, with each group giving two performances. The show is open to only 7th and 8th graders. There will be 55 students participating in this on stage and some 25 to 30 people working on the crew and on makeup and ushering, etc. Uh, the music students and the drama students are putting this play on. It has proven to be one of our favorites in the past because it's such a high energy show. Uh, we're particularly proud of, of the students because it is totally done by the 7th and 8th grade classes. In dealing with the three challenges of being part of a large school, teaching in open instructional areas, and stimulating the interest of 7th and 8th graders, the staff and administrators at Lake Braddock Intermediate have managed to turn these challenges into advantages for their students. With the large student population and school building come more opportunities for academics and activities. The open instructional areas encourage interaction between classes and camaraderie among teachers. And the emphasis on projects, programs, and activities help 7th and 8th graders make the transition into high school. Lake Braddock Intermediate is a school that is dedicated to serving the student, offering opportunities and encouragement throughout the intermediate years. <laughs>